Welcome back to Sketch Today. It's me, Spencer, and this week we're going to focus on some basic stuff. I know what you're thinking, this is going to be boring, but it's something that I find that even myself I need to practice and kind of refocus on from here on out. So this week is going to be Perspective Week. We're going to talk about one-point perspective, two-point perspective, three-point perspective, point of view, proportion, eye level, all that good stuff. So today we're going to start with one-point perspective, and I'll show you a couple of my tips and tricks on how I use one-point perspective if I'm sketching, and we'll go from there. So let's get right into it. So perspective, by definition, is a means or system of understanding the world around us. Uh, a very simple understanding or explanation could be defined as such. So let's say I have me here, an observer, standing here, and I'm looking at a box on the ground. Now what we draw and what we see on paper is defined by what's called a picture plane. And this is in two-dimensional view. If this were three-dimensional, it would be something like this, right? So we've got this picture plane. Think of it like the window, even like you're seeing me through the screen here, that's, that's a picture plane. Now, as we observe something, say on the ground, here's a box, and I observe each edge of this box, like so, these points of interaction on my picture plane are going to be what I use to define perspective. Um, very simply as well, if I have an object behind this box and I'm observing this object, you can see that if I were drawing this on a two-dimensional piece of paper, that there's going to be some overlap. So projecting these, these lines back to my picture plane here and so forth creates overlap. Now I've intentionally not sketched this on the picture plane here to illustrate and show you that there would be some overlap. So here's the height of my box in the back and here's the height of my box in the front. Okay. As I draw this, this would be behind this box. And that's a very simple way of describing perspective. But more importantly, there are a few terms that you'll kind of want to familiarize yourself with. So the first thing I'm going to draw here is what's called a horizon line. Horizon line. You can also think of a horizon line as an imaginary line that extends from your temples outward to the left and right to infinity. That's kind of the horizon line. And that's going to be where what we will place called a vanishing point. That didn't make any sense. On the horizon line, we're going to put something called a vanishing point. And as we sketch, all the lines are going to go back to that vanishing point. And that's going to start to describe our perspective. So just as the name implies, one point perspective. And I have abbreviated point with PT. Can't spell today. Perspective. There we go. So one point perspective, there's one point on this horizon line that all my lines as I draw will converge to. So let's just make this easy and we'll call this my one point right here, right through the middle. Now, let's say I wanna sketch a box in perspective. Well, with one point perspective, if you remember this diagram, the object in relation to the picture plane is such that the front of this object is parallel to my picture plane. So if I were to draw this in perspective, if this doesn't make sense, just ignore it. But it would be that the box is arranged in a way that this face, F, is coplanar with my picture plane, or parallel. Okay. So these lines that de describe the edges of my box are going back in perspective. And that is what one point perspective means. So that being said, if I draw a face of a box, very simple object in one point perspective, all I have to do is draw it like this. These edges are going to be 90 degrees to each other. Okay, that's my little 90 degree sign there. Now, drawing back to my vanishing point, let's start with this corner right here. Draw one line back, another line back, like so. Let's make sure that touches, and like so. And that's going to describe the convergence or tapering of the edges as described in one point perspective. Okay. 
Now, let's say I want to figure out roughly what the proportion is. Well, in perspective, one thing we know is that things further away from us, just as a general rule, are smaller than things closer to us. And that's what's giving us that sense of depth or that depth illusion. So here I can draw a line just like this and just kind of estimate where this back face is. Okay, and now I've started to estimate what this sh box looks like in perspective, right? So if you observe these sides as they go back in perspective are shorter than these edges in the front. So this one is shorter than my edges toward the front. Okay, so let's look at a few ways in which we kind of observe one point perspective in the real world. So you've probably seen something like this. You're standing in the middle of the street and you've kind of got something like this happening. And let's say there's a building here or a light post. And this is kind of a classic example here. Got some, some light posts and building. Maybe this is the face of one of the buildings here. Got some depth. So with one point perspective, you can pretty quickly start to carve out a scene. Right, here's the top of the building. Very simple. Maybe here's a little street lamp. For example, we've got sidewalk. <clears throat> you can do the same thing on the opposite side here. Okay, and the key is just for every line that's receding, so you can see I'm drawing from this vanishing point here, out, I'm using that to then essentially calculate how my buildings look, okay? And other details. So right down the middle, if I were to have those white lines you see on the road, they'd look something like this. Now, one of the tricks you want to pay attention to with perspective is the closer I get to the vanishing point, the shorter these lines should seem, okay? And the shorter these distances between these lines would get. So, as you can see here, probably should adjust this one. Here, these distances should appear to get smaller and smaller, okay? And the length of these lines should appear to get smaller and smaller, okay? And again, that's <clears throat> just because of, of how we see things in perspective. Okay, so that's one example. Another example might be something you're pretty familiar with. You're sitting at home, you're, you're watching TV, you've got your little entertainment center here, and let's say you've got your, your TV right here, and it's sitting, so I've drawn a horizon line right through here, and your TV's sitting on this little entertainment center. Well, what I can do with that vanishing point now is start to give some depth to my scene. So there's the front of my entertainment center, like so, maybe some little divisions here. Okay, so now I have some depth immediately. Maybe the corners of my room are like this, right? And so from this vanishing point, I can go out through the bottoms here and over. And as you can see, Well, maybe the back of the room should be a, a little bit wider, okay? So you can see the mistake I made here is that <clears throat> the corner of my room, if I draw that line like I drew it, it makes it look like the entertainment center is floating. Or I could just extend this down, right, and draw through. And now I've got a taller entertainment center. I like that. So what you've seen here, what you've witnessed, is actually one of my tricks, which is sometimes when you're drawing and you get a little mixed up, you can just modify and work with your mistakes. So just by correcting the bottom of my, bottom of my room here, I'm able to, to make this work for my sketch. So again, all these lines right, appear to be going to the vanishing point. Okay. That's one point perspective. Now, for the top of the room, I can mark a point 
draw a line through here and over and through this corner as well. <coughs> I'll use a Sharpie here just to kind of start outlining things. So there's the outline of the TV. And the reason I'm using a Sharpie is so that I can start to pull some detail out of this kind of messy sketch. But again, hopefully you get the idea here of one point perspective. Now there's a couple things you can pay attention to or, or infer rather from this drawing. For example, if the horizon line is the same as my eye level, then you know, if I were sitting, this is kind of where my eye level is. So things that are below your eye level, you're going to see a little bit of the top. So there's the top of my entertainment center. And things that are above the horizon line, I would probably see a little bit of the bottom. So if I were getting really detailed, I would show a little bit of the bottom of this TV, for example. So just a couple things um, that you can observe. Again, things that are further away. So this back edge right here, my back edge is going to appear smaller. So if I take my fingers or my pencil here, pen rather, and look at the distance or length of that back edge compared to the front, it appears to be smaller than the edge in the front. And that's just something that naturally happens with measured perspective or perspective in general. How we see the real world um, is kind of what we're trying to capture. And because this is a two-dimensional medium, you know, pad of tracing paper, it's really important to understand these principles if you're sketching because with a two-dimensional medium, it's really difficult to create some depth. So if you build and draw on these principles, it's really easy to then create three-dimensionality. But what about something a little bit more complex? Well, I can start with a vanishing point here, and let's say I wanted to sketch some sort of vehicle. Okay, What I could do is sketch out roughly the proportion of this vehicle. So here's the base of my vehicle that I have in mind. Now, here's my disclaimer. I'm not a car designer, but I like to think that I can understand uh, how to draw things. Uh, I've been doing this for a while. So I'm going to give this my best shot here. If you're confused about what I'm doing, I'll pop a little link in here. This is a little technique for drawing ellipses. Okay, And so here are where I'm going to put my wheels of my vehicle. Now let's say I have my side through here and drawing through we can put another wheel in the back here and if we want to get even more proportionally accurate, which I should do, this should be my wheel right here. So I made a little mistake in the back. Let's try and see where we end up with. So it wasn't too far off on the right side here. So I can sketch another wheel, like so. <clears throat> and for the body of this vehicle, you guys know I like sketching hot rods. So I'm just going to rough in a shape here in the middle, okay, like so, and on the bottom like so. Okay, just a roughed in shape, and then let's get our cab in here. And again, we can use and pull from these lines. Okay, so I've kind of marked the top here, going back to my vanishing point. And we can use that to figure out where our details go. Like so, and right in the middle. So here's a little trick as well. So if I have a curved profile, and as this curve is being cut into this car, the closer I approach to the, to the vanishing point, or the line here, I guess this, this you could call this a station line, the closer I get here, the more this is going to look like a line. So if I were drawing ellipses, okay, and I were approaching my vanishing point, it would start to look like this, if I were going in this direction, okay. And meaning the face of my, um, face that I'm drawing the ellipse on rather is like so, okay? These are fine. 
And so the closer I get to this line, the more it's going to look like a straight line. So if I'm cutting into the engine compartment, that's why this line looks almost like, or this cut rather, looks almost like a straight line. Now if I'm on this side, I'm going to have a line that looks kind of like this. If I were on that side, it would look more like this. So just depending on where you are in relation to your station line or station point, um, you can decide on how to draw that specific ellipse. So now I can, again, use these vanishing lines to draw my little intakes here. Okay, you can always check this. This is gonna get really messy, but we'll do a quick overlay here. And uh, you know, finish this off. And if we have some pipes coming off the sides here, And I want to increase the height on this, so I'm going to modify the sketch. But essentially, we've we've sketched a quick framework, okay, for this vehicle here. So for the thickness of the wheel, I can offset, draw another ellipse. And so if this back wheel is really fat, you know, it looks something like that. If the front wheel is really skinny, it maybe come in this way draw another ellipse, and that would be the thickness of my wheel. So there with one point perspective, we've roughed out a quick outline. And because I'm using tracing paper, which is really cheap, um, I can just slip this underneath my first page. Ah, sometimes these are a little sticky. There we go. So I can stick this under my first page like so, and Instead of tracing, I can redraw and get a nice clean sketch of this vehicle. Okay, and it, it's really easy because since I've already done the hard work of figuring out perspective and I've got my station point there, I can make a nice clean drawing. Okay. And it's fairly simple and should go pretty quickly here. Um, but this gives me an opportunity to talk about a little bit about pen technique and line quality as well, which is another thing um, that I think will make a huge difference in your drawings and your sketches, which is to say that what I'm trying to do, well, for one, if you look at how I'm holding my pen, I'm holding it almost halfway up the barrel. and that gives me, personally, uh, just a lot more control of the pen. It also forces me to have a lighter touch on the pen so that my lines have a nice, fresh feel to them, okay? And this is important if you wanna keep your overall drawing lively. Now, the more confident you become, the more easy and natural this will feel if you're sketching with your fingers holding the pen up high, um, but that just comes with time, okay? So don't worry if you're holding your pen like this right now, that's okay. Um, it'll just take a little bit of time before you get to that point. Okay, just adding in some details there. And we can get to the front, like so. And again, I'm not tracing, right? I'm not slowly going over these lines, but rather quickly sketching them nice and fresh. And that way, they just have a nice, fresh feel to them. So I'm modifying this hot rod. It's a little bit different here, but that's okay. Why not, right? Because we can. The other thing is, because it's an under sketch, it's fairly easy for me to come in and modify my design as I go, which gives me some pretty good flexibility. So for example, here, if I wanna make the back tire just a little bit bigger, I can do that fairly easily, okay? Again, because the perspective is 
kind of worked out. If you're wondering what I'm doing here, this is just my, my quick chrome technique. And you can watch my video about how to sketch chrome and why certain things look the way they do with chrome. So just with a simple, a few simple pen lines, you can show chrome as a material. And let's say we have a nice big fat tire on the back of this vehicle. Kind of liking this. This is uh, feeling pretty good here. And if you ever want to check if you're doing an overlay, you can kind of just lift the tracing paper a little bit and you kind of see you know, where things are ending up. And if you need to modify something or whatever, um, I'm going to add a little bit of a drop shadow under my vehicle. So, and then for the tire on the back, I'll talk about this in another video in the future, but essentially um, this just has to do with sketching things on an incline plane and kind of what uh, that would look like, especially with something like an ellipse. Um, it can be or feel tricky if you're sketching something on an inclined plane. So um, if that's super confusing, I understand, but hang tight. I'll make a video in the future here about how to exactly do that. Okay, so I've got my general sketch done. You can add some scenic lines here, maybe showing off some terrain and couple little extra details on our vehicle, but that being said, this is a quick and easy um, sketch showing a one point perspective and kind of how to go about doing that, okay? So I'm gonna skip ahead and I'll show you the final sketch here. And as you can see that, uh, you know, with a little bit of line work, and line weight, this is really going to start to pop. Thanks again for joining me on Sketch A Day. This is the first of our three part series about perspective basics as requested by you guys. Next time, we'll take a look at two point perspective and what exactly that means and how to go about sketching a two point perspective. Thanks for joining me, and we'll see you guys next time on Sketch A Day.